If you check through history, including African history and that of other parts of the world, you will observe that the major reason leaders of any regime, good or bad, were overthrown by external powers was because the external powers had someone or multiple people who had shifted their loyalty from their leader to those external powers. In other words, these leaders were easily overthrown because they had traitors close to them. We have seen this kind of situation portrayed over and over again in movies and books, and even the holy book, the Bible, says that a man's greatest enemies are men of his household, which is very correct. It is this tactic that the West has used to remove many great African leaders that should have changed the course of the African continent. This is why Captain Ibrahim Traore, the youngest president in the world, and one of the most revolutionary African leaders, came out recently to issue a warning to those who would betray Burkina Faso for their personal gain. Following the announcement of its withdrawal from the regional bloc, ECOWAS, Ibrahim Traore came out to explain to the people why he decided to withdraw from the bloc, an action that completely distinguished Captain Traore from other military leaders who would make a decision and expect the people to agree without any explanation. It was during this speech on February 17, 2024, that Africa's youngest president gave a resounding warning to traders, speaking to thousands of members of the citizen vigil committees commonly called the Wagignans. Captain Traor stated in clear terms that since he came into power, he has been warning local lackeys that have been operating on behalf of the West to disrupt stability in the country, to stop their actions and not betray the homeland. According to him, some of these lackeys listened and stopped, but some others refused to listen, probably thinking that they are smarter than the government. However, without mincing words, Ibrahim Traore declared that from then onward, the country will no longer have any sentiments of sympathy for traitors, and so anybody who betrays his homeland for the benefit of imperialism will be treated as such. He also added, what happened to Thomas Sankara should never happen again, and as such, if there is any sellout or traitor among the people, he should be taken out. In our opinion, this has to be one of the best speeches given by Captain Traor because, without missing a beat, he brought out one of the root causes of the African continent, which is people who would sell their country for their personal gain. And the bad thing is that they are everywhere. Some of them are even democratic leaders of African countries who smuggled their way into that position of power. The truth is, Africans are Africa's greatest problem. Over and over again, Africa keeps on making the same mistake that led it to its current state. From the transatlantic slave trade, which led to the colonization era, and then to independence and what we have now, one constant you will always find is traitors. People who would turn their back on the dignity, freedom, and sovereignty of their country and open the doors for external powers to do as they like in exchange for wealth and a chance to remain in power. It can rightly be said that these African traders are the number one reason why the African continent is the way it is today. Let's take a look at this history of traders so you can understand why Captain Triora made such a dire warning. History tells us that millions of Africans were transported from their homes on a ship so crowded that people could barely move and had to be thrown into the sea. This is correct. But how did the Europeans get so many Africans? Of course, some of these Africans were kidnapped on their way to the farms or marketplace by the Europeans, but a fact that most people refuse to focus on is that a majority of these people were sold to the Europeans by African leaders in exchange for gin, gunpowders, and mirrors. At the time, Africa was not as it is today, where it's a continent made up of 54 different countries. Instead, it was separated into kingdoms which had their own separate traditions and beliefs and sometimes went to war with each other. Interestingly, whatever kingdom won the war took people as slaves from the other kingdom that lost. So the Europeans didn't start slavery. It was these slaves taken by the African kingdom that were sold to the Europeans. So the truth is, as much as the Europeans are to blame for the forced mass migration of millions of people from Africa, African leaders are also to blame. Imagine if all the African leaders decided not to sell to the Europeans. 
This dark history of the transatlantic slave trade would never have occurred in African history. Now, the transatlantic slave trade spilled over to the colonization period, where the Europeans used a combination of military invasion, Christian missions, and diplomatic tactics to take over Africa. One of the tactics used by the Europeans to keep African colonies in check was to turn Africans against each other, meaning there was always an African who had been promised a good life by the colonial masters if he instigated disunity. This was how it was until cries of independence began to spread through all the African colonies after the Cold War, in which many African elites fought for their colonial masters. The cries reached a crescendo until the West had no choice but to grant a sort of independence to its African colonies. But unlike the colonial era, giving independence to their colonies meant they no longer had control over the people and the resources. So to ensure continued control over Africa, they resorted to using the same tactic used during the colonial era, which was using Africans against Africans. Any African leader who followed their rules and turned the other way, allowing the West to continue its exploitation of the country, nothing happens to them. As long as they conduct elections to present a show of democracy, which the West supposedly supports, these weak leaders are free to do as they wish. They could rule for as long as they want, and even pass the presidency on to their children as if it were a monarchy system of government and nobody would say anything. They could loot public funds, moving them to bank accounts in the West and enriching themselves and their families at the expense of the people and nothing would happen to them. Of course, sometimes Western media would come out to say these leaders are corrupt and bad and even Western courts might charge some of them. But have you observed that? It ends there. They don't go to prison for their actions. Instead, when they are tired of their position, they leave and enjoy the rest of their lives with stolen wealth. Meanwhile, millions of people whom these leaders are supposed to be leading are suffering from poverty and a bad economic situation. On the other hand, when the West observes that African leaders think differently, refuse to dance their tune, and are revolutionaries who want to better their countries, they employ the tactic of using somebody close to them to remove them from power. Think about Thomas Sankara, Patrice Lumumba, Muammar Gaddafi, and a host of other great African leaders who if they were left in power, Africa would probably not be as it is today. How do you think the West got to them? Take Thomas Sankara, for instance. This man was the greatest African leader to have ever lived. He ruled for just four years, but he transformed Burkina Faso completely. There is no doubt in our minds that if he were still alive, Burkina Faso would certainly not be the poor, insecure country that it is today. Unfortunately, Sankara was assassinated. It's a well-known fact that France was behind it because Sankara was pursuing a policy of complete independence, which means distancing Burkina Faso from Paris. France didn't want that and decided to eliminate him, but as you well know, they didn't do it alone. They did it with the help of Sankara's closest friend, Blaise Compaore, who, after the death of Sankara, went on to rule Burkina Faso for 27 years until he was removed from power. Obviously, France had assured Blaise that he had their support to orchestrate a coup that would assassinate Sankara and place him in power. Imagine if Blaise had refused to agree with France. Maybe Sankara would have been alive today. What about Muammar Gaddafi? The West already planned to eliminate Gaddafi because he was a threat to their plan. Gaddafi was fighting for a united Africa with one currency, something that would challenge the global order dominated by the US, UK, and Europe. However, they might not have succeeded in their plans if close officials to Gaddafi, including the president of Syria at the time, ministers from Gaddafi's inner circle, and African presidents, had not ratted him out and opened the door for NATO to assassinate him. It's such a shame that some African leaders are too dull or too greedy to recognize the tactics used by the West. This is why Ibrahim Traore has declared that there are no more sentiments for traitors, and if any traitors are caught, they should be taken out. Traore himself has also been a victim of this Western tactic. Just two years into power, Traore has experienced four coup attempts, which were obviously orchestrated by France using soldiers in the Burkinabe army. The fact is, the West will not stop because of how effective this tactic is, so it's now left for Africans to decide if they want to be traitors and sell their countries or not. But one thing is sure, 
The only way Africa will grow is for Africa to be united and remove traitors. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.